that we will have it to use the entire 12 month period versus the seven months that we're now allocating between now and the end of uh, September. Mr. Fink. For us in particular, that is being negotiated at Wright Patterson and Air Force Material headquarters between the union and the management up there. So we do not know the details of uh, what those furlough days, how we'll implement that yet. We're still waiting on guidance. But that is being negotiated between the agency and the, and the union. Uh, all of our mission partners on the installation will have to abide by those negotiations, except for DLA and uh, the Air National Guard, which have different labor agreements. But everybody else, the rest of us, will have to abide by those negotiations. Does that answer your question? <laughs> there's, there's various ways you can, you can skin this cat, if you will, and we, we don't have any details. We're just waiting to find out what's, what will come out of the negotiations. Brent, all I would say as we echo that is we would be very sensitive as we are still negotiating, but I will tell you there is emerging within the Air Force Material Command, a large majority of the folks, a, a strategy on how we're going to do this. One of the things we talked about was focus on the mission, take care of our people. The last piece of that, you and I, a lot of the leaders have talked about is we have we definitely need to maintain our competitive edge coming through this. And so that's the other piece that we're watching. So to your point about strategy, we've got to make very sure that as we continue to go through this, Team Warner Robins remains competitive. So we're right with you, absolutely. I didn't, you don't want to answer that. <laughs> I wear that uniform. Um, first of all, I think everyone who has followed the Department of Defense would expect that in either 2015 or 2017, or perhaps both, uh, based upon what we're hearing from the from the department, uh, that there would be a request for another round of base realignment closure. Um, whether that has not officially been approved, the, the Congress has not responded, so there is no BRAC, if you will, that is for certain any time <coughs> in the future. Uh, part of what we would expect to see out of uh, this next uh, National Defense Authorization Act uh, is working between the Department of Defense and our Congress uh, to determine when and how many rounds uh, would be required. All of our services have said they have around 20% excess capacity, and if we're going to absorb them, the size of cuts uh, that we've asked uh, our services to absorb, that they need to reduce their, their uh, infrastructure. Uh, assuming that there's going to be a BRAC, which is, I think, for all of us, uh, an assumption that we ought to make because of what's been said. Uh, what, again, this goes back to the idea of whether we have lemons or lemonade. This is an opportunity for our base to find new ways to be more efficient than perhaps they were in the past. And to look very closely at what were historically sacred cows and find new ways of doing business. For our community, it's a new opportunity for us to partner with the base to find out how we can drive down their costs so that they can be more efficient as well. To that end, we've been working for about the last 45 days uh, under initiative looking at public-public and public-private partnerships between the community and the base to find ways that we can drive down the cost. Perhaps there is in Houston County, for example, a contract that the base could leverage uh, and if we could encourage the, the county uh, and find an optimal point that the county could absorb uh, within one of its contracts, something that's being done more efficiently, for example, we're asking ourselves how we might do that uh, as a community to support the base. So we have a choice of how to respond to this, both inside and outside the fence. And that is, do we say, woe is me? Or do we say we can do business better if we think about it environment that we have and everything I've seen today says that we're looking at it from that perspective 
that will position us in a better way uh, should and when the next round of practice. Yeah. That's a great question. Thank you. Yes, sir, back here. I think you just signed up to lead that team, and I am exceedingly appreciative of it. And that's exactly what I would expect out of this community. And I will tell you, uh, the United Way does a remarkable job of supporting uh, all of those who live in middle Georgia. Uh, and this is a tool that we can use that we'll make available to our leadership on base uh, to disseminate uh, as folks need to understand what some of these opportunities are how uh, to take advantage of it. So thank you very much on that. Uh, sir, Trish, can you stand up? Sir, if you could make contact with Colonel Ross afterwards. She's heading that up, effort up for us, and so she will she'll be the go-between for us. And if there's anybody else who may have uh, wanted to have that kind of discussion as well, Colonel Ross will be willing to talk to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My name is Fred Ross. I'm from the entire commissary will not be affected by these. They're their own uh, private corporations, if you will, and so they will continue to operate. So the commissary may be affected by one day. They're still working that one. They may be affected. They may be shut down one entire day of the week. So instead of one day, uh, Monday's being shut down, they may choose one other day during the week to be shut down. BX, it should not affect uh, the lodging. Uh, we're, we're under restrictions on travel right now, so we're not seeing as many folks coming to Robbins Air Force Base uh, now. And so in order for us to conserve costs, we may set aside this close rooms down in the interim until we get back uh, full operations again. Uh, for our non-appropriate funds activities on the installation, we will probably see some uh, reduction in uh, maybe some hours and stuff because as, as our client base, as our customer base shrinks, we're probably going to have to do some things adjusting to conserve our dollars so that we, because we're a profit base now, uh, as effective last year, they have to make a profit. Uh, they get no subsidies from the appropriated funds. And so they have to be making a profit run like a private business. And so as, as our customer base shrinks, they're gonna have to change some of their operating hours and maybe some of the services that they provide as well. We'll get those in that information out as we make those decisions. Thanks. I saw Wayne Crenshaw somewhere in here. Wayne, um, you're gonna get a task out of this is as we make that information available or some of those challenges I would ask you either in your article or somewhere within uh, the Telegraph that we'd make that highly visible so folks can see it in addition to uh, the web pages that the base has. Time for one more question. My name is Lamar Patrick. I'm a retired Arkansas fighter who happens to enjoy the benefits of the Navy and there should be a significant number of volunteer activities that us retirees can help give back and continue to serve. Just give us an idea of what you need, and I'm sure we can enhance or encourage the retirees to come out and help as best we can during these trying times. Thank you very much. And what I would ask is uh, we have a retirees affairs office on the installation, and uh, he has a newsletter that he puts out on a monthly basis. I'd ask you. If you're available and as a retiree, if you want to get more engaged at this time, I would work that through our Retirees Affairs Office. We'll make sure we get that information out on our public sites and stuff and contact so that if you need to get that, you can. We appreciate your support, all of us as mission partners. You know, the support back to us is, is phenomenal from our retirees. And we've, we've made an, an effort to reach out to a retiree community and try to get them back on it. And the retiree community here has responded dramatically. Our, uh, 
our prescription medication uh, usage from downtown back onto the installation has been uh, very, very successful. And so we continue to support our retirees as much as we can, and we're going to do that in this new scenario as well. In over 34 years of service, I have never seen this many military leaders get up in front and talk about a tough issue. It reflects, first of all, how much this community cares about what happens on the base and its impact. And secondly, the leadership that we have here at Robbins Air Force Base, their understanding of this community and their desire to make sure that this community remains in form. How about a round of applause for all of our leaders? That have This concludes our event for today. Uh, if you've got additional questions, I'm sure that uh, folks can handle those. I but I would ask I uh, since the media would like some one on one time with uh, many of the military leaders that are here, uh, that you respect that and allow them the opportunity uh, to spend some time with the media first. Again, thank you for coming out and have a great day. You did a phenomenal job. It's great. Well, you know, I can. Hey. Next slide. Uh, yeah, but I know. <laughs> Remember, I was in the same business. I know what it takes to put this together. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Al. You doing okay? Doing good. So far, so good. All right. Take care. Take care. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Steve Nice to meet you. Chris. If those slides do come available, I'd like to get them back. You know, I'll email them. Yeah, I'll email them. Hey, man, good to see you. Good to see you, Joe. Take care. Hey, man. How you doing? Good, good. I'll email them to you. Yeah, okay, good. Good. Uh, but we'll, we'd be interested in the, the goodwill of the To team up with United Way. Yeah, I mean, I, I know, I mean, I, I used to work with all that entire group, so uh, we'd be interested in maybe helping them out. That would be phenomenal, yeah. honestly. And what is showing us support from the community. Yeah, and I've, I've, I've worked with all these agencies, gave grants for years, so I know most of all of them. Who are you talking to? Robert, I gave him a gift for $50,000. Give me a call if we can help with organizing that. I will. We'll be glad to. Thank you. 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 Thank you did a good job of jumping over there, Chris, but it ain't going to get you any further. So I'll